The idea of a villain arc has been around for a while, and whilst I don't think too many people take these ideas too literally and consciously say, oh I'm on my villain arc bro, although no judgement if that is you as I'll explain because I'm sure we can all at least relate to one or usually both of the main reasons people usually start one. Either something awful happening to them, a breakup being the most common one, or just I've had enough of people looking down on me, treating me a certain way, etc. And I think a lot of us do kind of enter one at some point without really being 100% aware of it. The idea of cutting people out and focusing on yourself for a while isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, if there's some people who just drain you or put you down, then it's a brilliant thing to part ways with them. But if you're going to go down this route, there's a couple things you should be conscious of, at least in my experience. So pretty much this time last year, things weren't going particularly great. My attempt at a math tutoring business was bringing in drastically less to my expenses each month. I just moved somewhere new and I didn't really know anyone. I was, at the very least, in my first serious relationship. However, after a particularly terrible day, the second I sat down on my computer, I got a text message saying, we should end things. And no further explanation, that was it. However, although initially I was obviously very upset, strangely, after a week or so, I actually felt all right. However, I made the very unfortunate mistake of checking her Facebook. And so just over a week later, I saw her in a relationship post with a bunch of comments below on how we knew this ages ago and it's about time from her friends. So it's pretty obvious what happened here, right? And following this, I just had this endless anger that would not go away no matter what I did. I was going to the gym. I was using a boxing bag I had in the garage. I was going on walks at 3am because I just couldn't sleep because I was so pissed off. And obviously I wasn't wrong to be angry. And even if I was, there's no quick instant way to get rid of anger like that. But what I realized looking back and what I would say is the best bit of advice I could give to anyone who's still watching this is trying to shortcut the process of moving past it actually slows it down. So before I go through what I did, let's look at Thorfinn from Vinland Saga because if I'd seen this show earlier, it would have made everything 10 times better for me. Thorfinn lives in a relatively peaceful village in Iceland. However, it is soon revealed that his dad, Thors, used to be the greatest fighter in the elite Joms Vikings before he fled them many years prior. These guys don't take kindly to people leaving, and so a trap is set to eliminate Thors. He has no issue in taking on dozens of men at once. However, with archers above him and his fellow villagers to protect, he makes a deal with the leader of the mercenaries attacking him, Askeladd, a one-on-one -on -one fight in which, if he wins, the villagers go freely. Not wanting to look weak in front of his men, Askeladd accepts and puts up a decent fight, but is defeated by Thors. Askeladd honours his word in letting the villagers go, but orders Thors to be struck down regardless. As we see the end of Thors, just four episodes in, even the ruthless mercenaries pay their respect to the greatness of this man in both skill and character. But Thorfinn is furious, and even the mercenaries are shocked by the bottomless anger in this child's eyes, and that anger drives him to spend the next decade humiliated, wounded and isolated, all in the hope of getting revenge on Askeladd in a fair fight. And over the course of this decade, he becomes an uncaring, merciless savage, killing more people than he could possibly count. Askeladd sends him on reckless errands with zero regard for Thorfinn's safety, such as bringing him the head of the legendary Thorkel the Tall in exchange for a fair duel if he succeeds. Thorfinn never wins these duels, but grows increasingly skilled each time. However, in their final fight, Askeladd comments on how, as long as he holds this anger, Thorfinn will never win. But the first season ends with Askeladd dying before Thorfinn gets the chance to change that, resulting in Thorfinn letting out a scream of pure despair as the horrors of the last decade flashed before him, which all resulted in nothing. In the second season, we have a very different Thorfinn, feeling immense regret at the hundreds of people he cut down over the previous decade, he's resigned himself to being a slave. Over the preceding two dozen episodes, with so many other things to focus on, he's able to gradually let go of his past and for the first time in a long while, smile as he begins a new life. And we of course get an iconic scene, possibly my favorite in any anime I have 
no enemies. Okay, so why did I recap the Vinland Saga? Well, did you not find it slightly crazy that Thorfinn spent a decade chasing Askeladd despite how miserable it was making him? And also, most crucially, based on his regret over his past actions, do you really think he would have felt any better if he had managed to get revenge? Because here's what I realized. So, obviously being cheated on sucks, but I'm sure there's people watching this who've had way, way worse happen to them. So, I can't speak for every single person watching this. Of course not, but in my experience, what I realized looking back is, I didn't want revenge. What I wanted was for those awful feelings to go. The anger, the misery, the insecurity. But I convinced myself that if I got revenge, whatever that meant, I'd feel better, that'd all go away. And so this is so cringe, but I wrote out these whole essays, and I mean essays of like, <laughs> the evidence that my ex has cheated and sent them to like her friends and family. And obviously they're like, why are you messaging me? So <laughs> it makes, don't ever do that. It makes me physically wince when I think back to this. And this was actually quite difficult just to type out because it makes me cringe so much looking back. But here's the thing. Of course, over time, you gradually move past things like this, but whilst you can't really control thinking about it, if you're constantly engaging in actions that cause you to think about it more, so in my case, it'd be checking their Facebook, editing these essays in a notes app before I sent them, you know, then that's obviously going to slow it down. And of course, it's a far more major thing than when I went through. But in Thorfinn's case, waking up every single day next to the person you're trying to get revenge on, having to constantly interact with them. No wonder he was still angry a decade later, because he never gave himself a chance to move past it. It was only in the second season that he actually started to make any progress, as I'll come back to. But something like that just takes a long time to move past. There's no shortcut to it. And if he got what he thought he wanted, it would have done nothing for him. And I kind of did the same thing, like I'd start making some progress, moving past it, feeling better. But of course you have up days and down days, right? And rather than accepting that, I was so desperate to move past these bad days that I'd send one of these long old essays and get cathars catharsis. I can't pronounce that word, but you know when you let your anger out and feel better for a few hours? I'd get that and then go back to feeling just as bad or worse. And I did this about three times before I realized, what's the fuck am I doing? And it was only when I stopped trying to get back at her and just blocked everyone associated with her on everything and started using that energy for myself instead that I started making progress. You might have noticed that it's also around a year ago that this channel was made. So that's where I put a lot of that energy. And the same thing happened with Thorfinn too. Once he was able to put mostly everything behind him and look ahead, soon enough, he was a completely different person. But again, it takes time and trying to shortcut it just slows it down. It can feel so overwhelming and like you don't know what to do. But I promise as soon as you've convinced yourself, if I just do this, I'll feel better. You won't. And I'm sure you can think of plenty of examples where this becomes very, very dangerous. You have to accept that things are going to suck for a while. There's things you can do to speed up the process a bit. Exercising, eating healthy, seeing good friends, etc. But there's no shortcuts. Hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying there. And so what I would sum up this video with, it should be a hero arc, not a villain arc. Both are really doing the same things for the most part. Notice how we never really spoke about what a villain arc even is or what people do in it. And that's because the things people typically associate with it are really quite normal. Going to the gym, cutting off people who are bad for you, standing up for yourself when need be, etc. All very normal things we should be doing anyway. But it's that shift in mindset from angry villain to someone doing something great for their future self that makes all the difference. Because if you're doing it to prove people wrong or to get back at people or because you want the people that have wronged you to see you one day and be like, oh, look out how successful he is now. It won't do anything for you and it won't ever happen anyway. So I did that of uploading my gym pics to Instagram because I used to be super skinny and I wanted everyone I used to go to school to see them, right? And obviously I have no idea what any one of those people thought because they aren't going to comment. Oh wow, I was so wrong about you dude, look at you. It sounds so obvious when you say it out loud like, out loud like that, but we all do it. And again, if you've been obsessing over trying to make other people think a certain way, that all links back 
to what we've been saying so far. And so if you did make it all the way here, do all those things you're planning to do for yourself, but do them because they'll help you, because they're healthy, positive things you should be doing. And if they're not, don't do them. You will look back and wonder what on earth you were doing. You will look back and wish you skipped the villain arc. If you made it all the way here, I wish you the very best of luck this year. I'd love if you came back to this video a year from now to let me know how you got on. Please do not do anything stupid you'll regret. Like I did, unfortunately things will suck for a while. Don't try to shortcut it, just use the time to make your future self better. Have a good day bro.